Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm assuming that you have already watched the 6193 Alpha video and you're now ready to progress through the 6193 Bravo video. This one, not as uh, kind of easy to understand as other regs. This actually is a little bit complicated. So if you need to, you just start it over and watch it as many times. If you have any questions whatsoever, please make sure that you drop the comments down below. I'll be happy to, to respond within usually a couple of hours of your of your uh, messaging me and uh, don't forget please make sure you subscribe to my channel tell any, all of your CFI applicants that you that you know to please make sure that you watch this channel and ask any questions about CFI training that they may have please make sure that you like my channel subscribe and click the little bell on the side to make sure you get notified for any new videos when they arrive so today we're going to talk about paragraph B which is uh, your authorization to perform certain solo flights and cross-country flights this is in addition to the Alpha. Now, if you remember from the Alpha video, we said we list two limitations. One of the limitations was that you can't land at another airport. And the second one was you can't go beyond 25 nautical miles. But if you remember from that video, I told you that you're actually limited to 50. And this is actually where we're going to talk about that issue. So it says, a student pilot must obtain an endorsement from an authorized instructor to make solo flights from the airport where the student pilot normally receives flight training to another location. And the student pilot who receives that endorsement must comply with the requirements of this paragraph. Well, let's look at the requirements of this paragraph and see what must be done. Well, it says, solo flights may be made to another airport that is within 25 miles from the airport where the student pilot normally receives training, provided that what? Provided that what? So if you want to land at any other airport besides the airport you took off from while soloing, what must you do as the instructor? What are your responsibilities as the instructor? Well, it says that the, the authorized instructor, which is you, uh, must have given the student pilot flight training at the other airport. So if you want them to go from, let's just pick airports. Let's say I'm at Lawrenceville, Georgia. So Lima, Zulu, Uniform. And I'll pick another airport that's within 25 miles. We'll say Gainesville. That's Golf Victor, Lima. If you want to look at that on your, on your aeronautical chart. For the, that's on the Atlanta sectional, by the way, for those of you watching not in the southeast. And um, so you got another airport within 25 miles. You want to send them over there to, to do some stuff. What must you do? Well, it says that you must give them flight training in both directions. Uh, over the route, entering and exiting the traffic pattern, and take off and landings at the other airport. So I'll have to take off from Lawrenceville. I'll have to go over to Gainesville with my client. Do some takeoff and landings, enter and exit traffic pattern, make sure they're receive the flight training over the route, make sure they know how to get there, and we should be good to go. So I've done that. Now what? Well, it says that the person who gave the training, me, so I'm the instructor, I have to endorse the student's pilot's logbook authorizing the flight. Now, what do we put in the logbook? Well, we'll have to go to advisory circular. AC 61-65 and you have to determine which is the most current edition because they changed that thing pretty often they just changed it to edition hotel it may change again in the near future don't know what the FAA has planned but you just look in there and it tells you exactly how to write the endorsement you don't have to guess at it so just copy it right out of there drop in the person's name and anything else that it asks you to drop into that endorsement to, to substitute in there for what it has the stock endorsement only says like first name middle initial last name so don't put that in there because I have no idea who that is and <clears throat> so after you endorse it it says that the student pilot you're endorsing that the student pilot has uh, an endorsement in accordance with 6187 of this part so once you make that endorsement for this particular training in this flight you're certifying that this person also has a 6187 you can't give them the 6193 um, Bravo endorsement unless you're going to actually a Bravo one endorsement unless you're actually uh, approved them or look excuse me unless you've actually looked at their logbook and seen they have a 6187 endorsement you can't give this unless they have the 87 endorsement and that's the 87 bacon Bravo Charlie in November they don't have bacon you can't send them cross country. And then it says that you've determined that they are proficient. So what does that mean? What does that word, what does that P word mean, proficient? Well, it means that they can do it and they probably don't need a lot of help from you. Kind of like how do you know somebody's ready to solo when they can go from startup to shutdown and you don't have to say anything 
Well, kind of the same way here. Proficient means that they're proficient, and you don't have to provide a lot of guidance. And what is the purpose of this whole entire flight? Well, the purpose of this whole entire flight, per the FAA, is to practice takeoff and landings at that other airport. So if they say to you, hey, I want to go over to Gainesville and visit my Uncle Joe and have lunch, what are you going to say as an instructor? Well, hopefully you're going to say no, because that's not the intent of this reg. It's published in black and white, folks. Don't get lost in translation. The sole purpose of this flight is to practice takeoff and landings at that other airport. Okay? So we don't want to, on the NTSB report or in the Aviation Safety Inspector's report, to have that the person was over there doing anything else besides doing what? And that's right. Purpose of the flight is to provide takeoff, is to practice takeoff and landings at that other airport. Okay, so that's the, if you just want to go from here to any other airport, as long as it's within 25 nautical miles. So in Alpha, we talked about going beyond 25, but if you remember what I told you, you're limited to 50. So if you're going to go beyond 25, but stay less than 50, what must we do now? Well, that's Bravo 2. Now, Bravo 2 is a little bit, I don't know why sometimes when they write regs, they use this, they use this language, which is very confusing. And I'm, I'm, of course, I'm pretty sure that if you look at the, the, the person who wrote this reg, they would have a, a pretty good uh, reason for the reason why they wrote it and put the words in that they did. I don't know the reason why it is, but it says repeated specific solo cross-country flights may be made to another airport that is within 50. So here it is. If you didn't know the definition of cross-country, see how confusing that would be? Specific solo cross-country flights within 50. You'd be like, ah, that doesn't make sense. I thought it had to be beyond 50. Well, it's because you didn't know the definition of cross-country flight until you started watching these videos and you became smarter. Um, of the airport from which the flight originated. So you want to go beyond 25 when you want to stay less than 50, it says here that you, the instructor, you must give flight training along that route in both directions, to and fro, including entering and exiting the traffic patterns, takeoff and landings at the airport to be used. Sounds simple. Just fly the route and then come back. Sounds simple, right? Well, it's not. There's some little, some little things on there that you actually have to do, which makes it a little bit complicated. And it says that... Um, after you've done this that you must make an endorsement and where do we find the endorsement the ac 61-65 and whatever the most current edition is just find that in there uh, and then it says that you must also have a student uh, a solo flight endorsement in accordance with 6187 so if they don't have that you cannot give them this and this is uh, getting into the the complicated stuff it says here the student has a solo cross-country flight endorsement in accordance with paragraph C. Well, we're in B. What, are we, what the hell are we jumping to C for? Well, I don't know. It's just the way the FAA does things because they can't put everything in specific order because there's just too many types of category of aircraft. So it has to be written in such a way that is very useful to the people from every category of if I want to do this for weight shift, all right? I have to read it a certain way. If I want to do it for balloon, I got to do it a specific way. If I want to do it for glider, I got to do it a specific way. So we can't just write the regs like here's regs for just for airplane single engine because we'd have too much regs and too much regs is a bad, 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 bad thing. So first off, it says the student pilot has a solo cross country flight endorsement in accordance with paragraph C of this section. However, for repeated solo cross country flights to another airport, that is within 50 nautical miles, in other words, less than 50, from which the flight originated, separate endorsements are not required to be made for each flight. So remember when you did your solo cross-country and every single cross-country that you did beyond that 50 nautical mile, your instructor had to give you an endorsement for every one of those flights. And it's only good for that flight and that day. Okay, that's your 6193 Charlie 3. So we're going to wipe that completely out of this conversation because that doesn't even apply to this per what we just read right here in this here version here okay so what is it that the training that we must do in C well C it says that you must have endorsements for solo cross-country flights a student pilot must have an endorsement prescribed of this paragraph for each solo cross-country flight and for and they have these these two Charlie one and two here says uh, you must have an endorsement from an authorized instructor for the specific category and this almost same exact sentence uh, an endorsement from an authorized instructor for the specific make and model. 
and it says that you've done the training uh, of this part conducted the training well what training must you do remember in alpha where I told you we're going to talk about a b c d and one other letter well this is that one other letter and we're going to talk about it again in the next video where we specifically holistically talk about Charlie but in this particular one I've got to know what is the training that I must provide in the category and in the make and model because it says in Bravo 2 that I must concur with paragraph C all right if I must concur with paragraph C C says I must have the training but it doesn't tell the training where do I find the training well remember I told you this is for single engine so I'm going to scroll down to there's C I'm going to scroll down to D we're not going to talk about that yet and we're going to go to E now E says or reads maneuvers and procedures for cross-country flight training in a single engine airplane and here list every bit of the stuff that I must go over in that person's training so in order to have a person make repeated solo cross-country flights from one airport to their to this airport where I am back and forth I have to give them flight training along the way which includes everything within echo for single engine okay if it was a multi-engine it would be paragraph foxtrot if it was a helicopter it would be paragraph golf okay but we're specifically talking about single engine so here it is here single engine and I must give them flight training along the way entering and exiting the traffic pattern the whole entire thing and once I do that I give them the endorsement the 6193 Bravo 2 and that's found in the advisory circular 61-65 and then they're good to go to make repeated solo cross countries as much as they want back and forth between that airport that's over 25 but less than 50 and back to you now uh, watch the video again if you have any questions please make sure that you let me know um, but uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it up by going back to Bravo I'm a little bit over my 10 minute mark here which is kind of bad but I'll, I'll try to help as much as possible with the if you just post the comments down below so we left off right here uh, I think it was right here um, so uh, nope right here so it says the student has a solo cross-country flight endorsement and records for paragraph C of this section which means that if you want to give the 6193 Bravo 2 endorsement for repeated solo cross-country flights, you must also give the 6193 Charlie 1 and Charlie 2 endorsement. And that's written into one endorsement. It's located within the advisory circle 6165. So if you want to do a Bravo 2, this is actually, you might as well just go ahead and just have them solo. So what's the use behind this why did they put this in here? Well, I'm going to give you this scenario, and this scenario is what you're going to take to the check ride with you. You have a client. Let's say that you're, I'm in Lawrenceville, Georgia, and I have a client in Athens, Georgia. Alpha Hotel November. And that is less, more than 25, less than 50 from where I am. So the student pilot, I've been working with him. He's been flying over uh, to fly with me because he's like, so man, I really like Todd. I really wanted to fly with Todd. So he's been fly, driving from Athens. And then one day he calls me and says, hey, dude, I just bought a Sky Chicken. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. It's, it's a great aircraft, a good beginner aircraft. It's really, really good. And he goes, yeah, so you're going you're gonna to drive over to Athens to work with me? And I'm like, uh, no, I'm not driving 100 mile, almost 100 miles a day to, to work with you. I don't even like you that damn much. So... <clears throat> Anyway, so after he calls me back, after he hangs up on me, then we finish talking about this, and I'm like, all right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go out, and I'm going to give you this training. And when I give you this training, what it's going to do is going to allow you to, to fly from your airport, Athens, to here as much as you want for your flight training. And we're good to go. So the purpose of a Bravo 2 would be if a person lived at a other, another airport further away, uh, farther than 25 but less than 50 they can go back and forth as much as they want from their airport to you to train and they don't need a separate endorsement for every single flight like you did in your training where you had a Charlie 3 endorsement for every single cross country that you did you don't need one why because it's less than 50 that's it that's Bravo a little bit long-winded 15 minutes you can handle it break it down into two parts whatever 
Um, post the questions down below. Of course, understand, I know this is not easy stuff to kind of stomach. But if you don't ask the questions, I can't help you. So make sure you post the questions down below. Love to hear from you. You guys have an absolute great day. I wish you the best success in your CFI training. Remember, remember, it's not that hard as long as you have a good instructor. See you. Bye.